all the way back in 2018, I featured a format called MQACD. Now this was a two-in-one format. It's a CD that can be played in a regular CD player. However, if it's played in an appropriate player that's compatible with decoding MQA or the digital output is sent through an MQA decoder, you can hear the MQA version of the audio. And that's supposed to be a higher quality. MQA is a high res audio codec, it's similar to say FLAC, but it takes up less space. Now MQA existed before MQA CDs came along. It was adopted by Tidal for their high res streaming. But putting MQAs on a CD was something that was new back in 2018, or at least as far as Universal in Japan was concerned, they put out a load of new titles on the format. It had been demonstrated in 2017, but a big push came along in 2018, and that's where I got interested. So I imported a number of MQA CDs from Japan and attempted to play them. Now, at the time, there was quite a few issues. Whilst there was a load of CDs out, trying to actually play them back on anything was expensive and complicated. You either got yourself a brand new CD player that could cost a few thousand pounds or you got a decoder that attached to a, your regular CD player and the cheapest one of those that I could find was around about a thousand pounds. So all a little bit too expensive when the discs themselves cost just a little bit more than a regular CD. However, at the time I did find an MQA decoder box, which looked like it might work by attaching to the coax or optical outputs from a CD player, but it turned out it didn't work like that. Unfortunately, you had to attach it via USB to a computer and play your MQA CDs back in the computer to be able to decode them. So I had this janky solution that I demonstrated at the time. It wasn't ideal, but my whole interest in this was trying to play back this new format that featured countless physical audio and visual formats over the years, uh, many of which have come and gone, and this might fall into that category, more on that later. But that's where my interests lie. I don't really care for high-res audio. I don't believe it's something that physically I'm capable of determining over any other kind of audio. And I've also got opinions that maybe the whole thing is a bit of a waste of time for most people as well. But then again, there's perhaps a reason why you might want to still look for high-res versions of audio. I'll explain more on that later on. And therefore, MQACD was just a curiosity to me, something that I wanted to try out. But now, all these years later, all those problems seem to have been resolved. Well, almost all of them. As far as the hardware goes, I saw the other day that I could get an MQA decoder, which said it worked with CD players, just plugged in as I hoped originally the first one that I got would have done. Apparently, just stick it into the coax or optical output of a CD player, and you can hear the MQA version of the audio that's on one of these dual CDs. So let's see how I get on. OK, so here's the product. It's the SMSLSU1. Now here's what's inside the box, you get the small metal cased DAC, a USB-C power lead and the instructions. Now this SMSL company, over in Japan, they sell an MQA compatible CD player for 100,000 yen. That's around about 530 pounds. It's not cheap, but it's around about a third of the price of the cheapest MQA capable CD player that I could find back in 2018. This £80 box does what I need though, it's got optical or coax in from an external CD player and analogue out over a pair of RCA sockets. It can also attach to a computer via USB to work as an external DAC, but I'm just using the USB part here for the power. There's a single button on the front that when tapped will cycle between the three inputs and when held down powers the device off. Conveniently, the device remembers the last selected source when it's turned back on. Now, for testing purposes, I'm going to be attaching it up to this CD player slash recorder combo unit. I'm going to be using its coax output. Now, if everything works out just fine, I'll attach the box up to my main hi-fi, but we need to test it first. I'm going to be connecting the output from this up to my usual powered speakers. Now, I've dug out a handful of my old MQA CDs. I'm going to be using the sampler disc here. This contains a variety of rock and pop, and these discs were a good deal, as they only cost a thousand yen at the time, compared to the regular CD albums, which often cost three thousand yen. And in addition to that reduced price, you also got a second disc included with these, 
all the same songs on the MQA CD on a normal CD. So then you could compare the regular CD against the MQA version and that one against the MQA CD compatible version that's on the same disc. Now, to me, this demonstrates a degree of confidence in the product. They must have thought that the improvement in sound was good enough to be heard by a customer when compared against a regular CD. Now, with this device, I've got a choice of two drives. The one on the front can record and play, and the one on the top just plays. So I put the MQA disc in the top loader. After turning the decoder on, the audio started coming through, but I did notice that the MQA light wasn't coming on, so this meant I was just listening to the CD compatible version. And this is what happened to me when I tried this last time, back in 2018. I thought the box I got would decode over coax and optical, but it turned out that wasn't the case. I was hoping this time that that wasn't what was happening here. So I tried the disc in the other drive, just on the off chance that that might work. And look at the box now on the left. There you go, the MQA light has come on. So it's just some weird anomaly of this player, but it doesn't matter. We've got MQA discs properly decoding through this little box now. I have noticed though that the MQA decoding can take a fraction of a second to click in after a track change. Just have a listen. There's just a very slight break in the audio when it jumps between that compatible CD version and the MQA decoded version. I've also noticed that there's no CD text on this disc, which is a bit of a shame for such a relatively recent release. The next thing I did, though, was to see if I could hear any differences between the three versions of the same track, swapping back and forth between the two discs and putting one of the discs in that top drive, which wasn't decoded in the MQA version, so I could hear all three versions. I didn't notice anything of no, any difference between the three. I'll say, though, that I would happily listen to any of them, but as for which one sounds the best, well... That's all of them and none of them at the same time. Of course, it's not the ideal listening environment, so I tried my headphones as well, but due to a lack of a headphone output on the DAC, I had to pass the audio through my PCM recorder and connect the headphones to the output of that instead. But again, all three versions, to me, just sounded as good as one another. It was a dead heat. Now, if you go looking on YouTube for the video that I uploaded about MQA CD back in 2018, you won't find it because I deleted it a few years ago when I realised it had, well, there was a couple of reasons. First one is it had got out of date. The information I'd given out in that video was accurate in May, June 2018, but years later it had fallen out of accuracy. I was saying in the video the fact that you couldn't get uh, an MQA decoder for less than a thousand pounds. As we've seen today, you can get one for £80 that works just fine. I'd also mentioned the fact that the cheapest MQA CD player was like a £1,500, I think. Well, I'm, I've seen ones now that are like £500. I'm sure there were some quite a bit cheaper than that as well. So, yeah, the information was played wrong. The trouble is that when you put a video up on YouTube, quite often now, I think the date part of it seems to disappear the date you uploaded it. It doesn't show in the same way as it used to do years ago. So people can come on now looking for information about something, go, oh, here's a video about it, and think that you're telling them current information. It doesn't make it very clear that this is like six year old information. Back then, the only way to get it to work was to decode the MQA over USB from a computer. And I was playing the CDs through that and then streaming it through the USB to this MQA box. But it was by no means a good demonstration of how the format worked. But unfortunately, bits out of that video were taken out of context and then posted on forums and things where people were misunderstanding exactly what was going on in the video. The MQA had popped in and out on the decoder on one of the discs, it was a bit faulty. The disc was falling back to the CD compatible version and jumping back and forth, but I can't tell you whether or not the CD compatible version was playing properly. I mean, the whole thing was just a bit flaky, but people use it as like, this is proof of this. And so I thought, no, nah, I don't want to get involved. It all gets a bit tribal with MQA. I mean, the company did not do themselves any favors. They uh, obfuscated a lot of the information. They were vague, which is not an ideal thing to do when you're talking about a technical subject. People want to know all the facts and figures. Not me, but people who are into that kind of thing. And then people were saying that they were being like dishonest or hiding information. And then there was all this kind of to and fro. And it all got a bit, you know, too much drama. And they were trying to drag my video in all this. But there was too many things went wrong in the video for it to be used as any evidence of anything. But yeah, when we come back now to high-res audio and MQA, 
the MQA have gone into uh, receivership or liquidation or something. Now, I've just got to butt in here for the sake of accuracy because there was a word I was hunting for there, but I was unable to find, and that word was administration. MQA Limited went into administration in April 2023. Now, in September 2023, MQA Limited's assets were bought by Lenbrook, and that company also owns NAD or NAD, PSB speakers, and Blue Sound. Tidal dropped MQA as a format. They've still got existing audio in MQA, but their new stuff, they were using FLAC instead. I think that's perhaps because all, uh, the file size doesn't matter as much anymore. As when they started with MQA, they wanted a small file size for high-res audio, and as people's bandwidth has increased, that's not as much relevance as it was once. And now, I, I suppose they'd have to license MQA, where I think FLAC, I think you can, uh, there's no licensing involved. So you can see the benefits of moving from one to the other. They're still around. I mean, the website's there, but the press releases haven't been updated since early 2023, which tells you something. And if you click on what uh, releases are out on the format, as far as the physical ones, of course, MQA is also just the codec as well as the MQA CDs. But if you click on what's just come out on MQA, it's something from 2021. So, yeah, it doesn't look like anything much is happening there. So I'm now looking at this as a historical audio format, much the same way as I'd look at 8-track or mini-disc or any of those kind of things, cylinder records. For me, this is something that has been and gone, and that's still my interest in it. I'm not here trying to uh, battle on behalf of MQA, saying yeah, it's a brilliant high-res audio format, or go the other side and say, no, it's a rubbish high-res audio format. To me, none of that matters. It's just the fact it's an interesting thing that came and went, and it's still kind of trickling on. There's still a couple of releases coming out of Japan, but nothing like there was in 2018. Now, I want to just mention about high-res audio, because whilst I say that I can't really determine the difference, I'm, I'm quite sure of that, uh, and if I feel like I can, I'm probably just kidding myself. It's a placebo effect. But as far as high-res audio, I can understand why someone would choose that over a regular CD, whether they were buying an SA CD or an MQA CD and decoding the MQA on it, or playing a high-res audio version of something, because the chances are the high-res one is going to be better. And by that, I don't necessarily mean it's going to be a better one off the same master. It's just probably going to be a better master that's been used. You see, just taking this back to something that's a little bit more tangible. If you were to buy a UHD 4K Blu-ray disc, you're pretty certain that the video quality on there is going to look better than your old VHS. And you're also pretty certain that the video transfer, the movie transfer that they've used, isn't going to be the same one that they used back when they made the VHS years ago. They're going to have gone back to it, they'll have cleaned it up, they'll have done their best to make it look good. And that, to me, is what's happening with any high-res audio releases. When they stick that little high-res sticker on there, they say, look, we've made an effort. We've gone back to the masters, we've made sure we've got the best quality master, we've cleaned it up, we've transferred it in a way that was better than we did back in 1980 when we put out the CD, that kind of thing. Also, a lot of CDs, they have this brick wall in effect where things are pushed right up to the edges, the dynamic range is, is limited. To make your high-res version appear better, you make it so it's got a good dynamic range on it. It's rarely the identical version. If you look at a channel, as a chap on YouTube, you might have seen him, Parlo Graham. He looks at Beatles releases. And if you watch one of his videos, he'll often say, you know, on this particular album, this CD, the best version you could get, came out in Germany in 1986. You don't want the one that came out in the US in 1990. The one that came out in the box set in 95, that's got some issues with it. This one's better than that. All for the same album, released across a number of years. It just shows you that you can get the same, effectively, thing that was recorded in the 1960s, but there's better and worse versions of the CD for it. And that is why when you see that high-res symbol on some kind of physical media, it just shows to me that someone's made the effort, and that's what high-res means to me. Now, I just wanted to show you the most recent MQA CD that I could see mentioned on the MQA website. Back in 2018, I imported my CDs from Japan because they were only available over there. But whilst looking at the UK MQA page for this video, I noticed that they'd added in a page about the MQA CDs, and they mentioned a few releases on this format. 
So I picked the first one that was shown on this slideshow. That's Nina Simone, The Montreux Years. And I think it's a sign of the times that clicking the link leads you to a mention of the album on vinyl record, as well as how to stream it on a number of different services. There was just one link to the physical version on Amazon. But clicking on that leads you to a general Montro album page, so you have to find your way back to Nina Simone again. And clicking there then tries to get you to buy the vinyl record again, so you finally have to say, look, I really am only interested in the CD. Once you've clicked on that, you get the page all about the CD, and there's absolutely no mention here about it being an MQA CD. So naturally, I had to order one to find out if it was. Right, well, here's what's turned up, and initially there's no indications that this is an MQA CD. There's nothing on the spine there. It just shows it's this BMG release, 2CD. Looking at the back here, though, we can see the track listings, and down at the bottom, get your magnifying glass out, there we go, MQA CD. Now, whenever you get a CD, you always get loads of little logos along the bottom that don't tend to mean anything, and that's just another one that won't mean anything to the vast majority of people. It's just because we're looking for it, we know what it is. Let's just get in here and see if the discs are the same green colour as the ones I got from Japan. I doubt it. I think they've just disguised this as a normal CD, but we'll find out in a second. If I can find the CDs. There it is. It's in the top. Right, so... There's two CDs, and they're both going to be MQA CDs, and um, let's see if there's anything mentioned on those. Now, I'll just mention, for anyone worried, this is a soft surface. It's like a padded, soft, kind of leatherette effect. People worry about me putting things down on here, thinking I'm going to scratch them. No, I could do that all day long, and nothing's going to happen to them. But let's just have a look at this and see if we can find an MQA logo. Well, there it is on the bottom there. But yeah, there's nothing other than that that's special about these CDs. Let's see if there's anything in here that goes into the MQA side of things, explains how to decode them, tries to promote it a little bit. So far, I'm not seeing much. No, it's, uh, it's completely missed out on it, I think. Yeah, nothing in there. I just want to check these have the MQA version on them. It's not just printed on the CD label. So let's play one back and see if it shows up on the MQA decoder. Yep, there we go. It's an MQA disc. And I'm just going to mute the sound down because I want to show you something. When I put the CD on, I noticed the CD text was showing up there. So let's just get that to display again on the screen. So track one is someone to watch over me. So it shows you can't have an MQA CD with CD text on it. It's just those universal releases from Japan chose not to use that feature. And I suppose that makes this set one of the most fully featured CD releases that I've got because we've got the regular CD, we've got the MQA CD and we've got CD text on it as well. There was one last thing I wanted to try with this demo set. Since I've got the same tracks in three versions, the regular CD one, the green CD compatible version and the full MQA decoded one, would I be able to see any difference between these three versions if I was to record them and then look at the waveforms on the computer? For example, would the MQA one show as having more dynamic range, have higher peaks and troughs when compared against the others? Or would the CD show as being more brick-walled or perhaps just recorded at a lower volume to try and fool the listener into thinking that one was inferior? Well, I can tell you that after recording the same track across in all three versions, in the best quality that I could get out of my PCM recorder, I can tell you that the results are indisputably inconclusive. Yeah, to my naked eye, they all just looked identical. Now, I'm not saying they are identical, I'm just saying there was nothing to see to draw any conclusions from, other than there doesn't appear to have been any handicap to the regular CD version in any way. It's a fair fight between three versions that were all recorded at the same volume. I did try and do the trick of comparing one recording to another by inverting one of the recordings and then merging both together to create a third one that just contained the differences between the two. But that didn't work out. These digital to analogue to digital recordings naturally fell out of sync with one another, which rendered any comparisons between them meaningless. 
So all very inconclusive. And as I say, I can't tell the difference in sound between all three versions because I've got silly old ears. But putting aside all the technical side, I've connected the decoder box to my hi-fi now. And this adds another format into its repertoire. This might be a case of crossing the streams, but the MQA CDs here are being played by my Sony SACD player. And as you'd expect, they sound just fine. Now, one of the things that I thought was interesting about this particular CD is that it's promoted on Amazon as just a regular CD. You wouldn't be aware from looking at it or even picking it up that it was an MQA CD unless you knew exactly what to look for. And the reviews on Amazon, I'm quite sure from people that have just played it back as a regular CD. Nobody mentions the MQA side at all there. And they seem happy with it. Nobody mentions that there's anything wrong with the sound quality. And that's one of the concerns with the CD side of the MQA CD, that it seems to nick a bit of the data that's needed for the CD. After all, where does this MQA audio hide on the CD? It's got to go somewhere. And apparently it nicks a little bit off the, let's say, bandwidth of the CD side to put that in there. But the claim was that it nicks the part that nobody could hear anyway. And maybe that worked. I mean, nobody seemed to notice that that CD sounded bad. But then again, I mean, these are live recordings which will have been made with just regular kind of reel-to-reel -reel tape recorders. So it won't be all that great quality in the first place. It really seems a bit overkill to be putting them out on a high-res audio format, if you can call MQA that. But yeah, if any of those people that have bought that CD wanted to hear the amazing MQA version, they could get themselves one of these little boxes for just 80 quid, which works just fine. I wouldn't recommend it, though. I wouldn't recommend any of this. That's not what this video is about. I'm not recommending anyone buy into MQA CD. It definitely feels like it's already been and gone, but even just looking for old CDs with MQA on them, I, I just don't think it's worth it. When CD was being developed, it was supposed to be developed to a standard that contained all the audio that the human ear could hear. It all gets a bit vague when people say they've got things that sound better than CD. And I'm not going to say that they're wrong because I can't hear it anyway. So it doesn't matter to me. I'm out of this argument entirely. As far as I'm concerned, it's an interesting part of history. It's perhaps the last physical music format that will ever come out. I'd just like to have a look at what has been and gone. I think this one's been and gone and this video has definitely been and gone. So I think I should leave it there and say that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.